can't get this little bear. I mean, just like. Look, if I pull down, it springs back. But how about we try to test this thing and see what we can get up and on the trailer. That's impressive, guys. That 220 pounds of counterweight added pounds of additional lifting capacity. Guys, welcome back to the Harlem Project. You just got yourself a Chinese skid steer and you're wondering, should I add counterweights? And how much will they truly help? We're gonna answer that question today. There's already a number of great videos out there that show just how much these will lift in terms of a max test. But that's kind of like the big guy at the gym. You know, he can bench press a Buick, but does he have functional strength? Well, today we're gonna do functional strength. Let me show you what we got going on. Over here, our first test, we'll be using a standard car hauler. You might substitute this for a landscape trailer. Over here is a standard pickup truck. And over here, just to set the bar a little higher, we're gonna go up and over the top of this trailer. So this will be our extreme height. The counterweights I have on the back of this machine are four 55 pound suitcase weights off of an old Kubota tractor. I got a pretty cool video of where I welded up custom brackets to hang this on. I'll put a link to that at the end of the video if you wanna see how I did it. But this is 220 pounds of total counterweight. I'm 215 pounds, so it's kinda of like having a twin back here. And as far as I can tell, it's made a big difference but I haven't done this test yet. We're gonna find out together. While we're talking about weights today, you're gonna to hear me include the weight of these forks in the total weight, and I think that's important, and I think it's gonna help you. And the reason being is that this is a full-size set of pallet forks, and that's different from a pallet fork that is designated for a mini skid. They're much smaller, they're much lighter. I think around 160 pounds to 180 pounds is what you would expect for a mini skid set of forks. That's what I've read in the forums, but comment below. Tell me what you guys have if you've weighed yours. This I have weighed. I know for a fact that this head headache rack and, and the forks itself are 281 pounds. I also know that this plate back here that I welded on, another plug for an awesome video if you wanna see how I made this, that this plate in the back is 28 pounds, but then I have some extra brackets here that went on. So let's just call it clean round numbers. This whole thing is 300 pounds. To add weight to this pallet, we're gonna use these pavers. I have a bunch of them. And I'll put a little picture up here of me weighing them. This was 8.4 pounds and this was 13 pounds. I'm intentionally gonna lay these out flat, okay? In fact, let me do that because I think, I think that's more real world. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not getting this underneath. I added two, two more of these big blocks. Remember the 13 pounds each? And I added five more of the small, which are 8.4 pounds. So we're up to 735 pounds. That's everything. Remember, everything. Pallet fork and the pavers. Well, not the pallet, but 735 pounds. And it didn't tip forward, okay? But what I noticed when I was loading it on as I got to that last one, I started to notice the rear end come up a little bit. And I'm gonna call it failed. Take a look. I can actually get this underneath now, okay? Now I can't slide it all the way under, but I'm gonna call this failed. Because remember, this is a functional test. It can't just sit up here and not tip over. I gotta be able to be in motion, lift it up, and it be stable. Guys, it is hot, 95 degrees with the humidity, about 160. <laughs> My truck's at 106 degrees, so man, do me a favor, hit that like button. I'm working hard for you. I added 18 more of those smaller weights, so that's an additional 151 pounds, which brings the grand total to 886 pounds that's on the front. So we're gonna put these counterweights on and see if we can do that same test. Nope, can't get the stick underneath. I'm, I still can't get that under there. Okay, still, still won't go all the way underneath the track. Look at the level on the track. It's actually facing downhill. Meaning I'm not getting any cheater's help by this thing running uphill. It's actually going downhill a little bit, which 
Makes a whole lot of sense given that there's a lake in that direction. That's impressive, guys. That 220 pounds of counterweight added almost 400 pounds, 390 pounds of additional lifting capacity. I may have had a flaw in my test over top of the dump trailer, and I and I realized it on my, you know, on my ride over here, which is that when when this thing is up in the air like that, right? If we can imagine this thing lifting, it actually has to come further out before it can come back up. So, you know, although being higher puts it at a disadvantage, it actually starts to move the weight further back. So when it's out here, it's the furthest away. This might actually be a harder test than the dump trailer. Well, I think I answered my own question, and I would say, thank you, Lord, that that didn't damage my truck. Um, I'm gonna call that definitely a fail because we're we're trying to do this um, safe and we're trying to do this under stable conditions. So let me cut some weight here, and we'll just start working our way backwards. I'm calling that it's max. Just just the way it felt with me moving it, I was getting real nervous. I was getting ready to hurt my truck. So the test over the dump trailer, we gained about 400 pounds of lift capacity by adding those counterweights on. So if we work backwards from here, if our max weight is 1,000 pounds minus 400 pounds, that means this machine without those counterweights would have about 600 pounds of capacity. Now there might be some really smart folks watching this, and if there are, like some engineers, if they are, please comment below. This could be really fun. I'm guessing that it's not a one-to-one -one ratio because of the fulcrum. All right, we're gonna move on to this last test. And this one, I've added a twist to make it interesting. I have two by fours here because I don't wanna tear up my trailer. So here's an example of where I drug a pallet across my deck and it gouged into it. But we're gonna do a slide test. Now we've all seen where somebody sets a pallet on, on the side of the trailer, right? And then slides it forward. That's the easy part. That's why I have these two by fours here because I don't want to tear up my deck boards. But can you pull it back? Let's bump it up to 710 pounds. Just a little behind the machine, when the front idler wheels hit an uneven part of the yard, it tipped forward and landed on the trailer, and that's the point I'm calling this failed. And if the trailer weren't there, it would have just gone all the way down to the ground. So 710 pounds is where we failed. At 655, we, we did a clean run. So somewhere in there in the middle uh, is probably where this thing maxes out without counterweights. Admittedly, that, that came back way easier than I thought it was gonna come back. I, I really thought the machine would struggle kind of only partially being under that pallet and trying to get it back. And it could be because this, these boards are smooth, whereas if you were coming across deck boards, you'd be coming against the grain and you'd have some friction from these board gaps. Since I'm not willing to risk tearing up my trailer, how about I'll put some more weight and we'll see what this thing will really do. I wasn't willing to do it on my truck, but how about we try to test this thing and see what we can get up and on the trailer. Is that a deal? I'm gonna shake on it, lock it in. This is you locking it in. Okay, we're good. Oh, here, look guys. I would guess, well, I know what's gonna happen if I get off. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if I get off, it falls forward. Having some experience with this machine, I'm gonna say that this machine has a max lift stacked to your advantage of 1,400 pounds going forward. And what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is, 
I already know how this machine reacts when I go backwards. When I go backwards, rather than everything moving, the first thing this machine wants to do is actually sort of roll on itself, meaning tip forward. And I'm thinking with this 1,400 pounds, this thing would just fall on its face. So I don't even think I'll be able to get it off this trailer. So I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna go in reverse. And if I'm a betting man, this thing's gonna fall forward right on top of this trailer. If I keep going at some point, this thing's just gonna fall forward and I'm risking those forks coming down and you know, gouging the side of my trailer. And Well, while I love a good video, I don't think that's gonna be viral enough. So I'm gonna call it right here. But I would say the way this is configured, um, you know, you would be able, that would be like lifting up a big log or a big steel pipe or something where you could hang it right underneath the pins. In fact, if you could hang it right underneath the pins, you'd probably be able to do something heavier than 1,400 pounds. All right, so I would argue that that was about the same result, both in how it looked and how it felt from my position as the operator. Remember, if we go back to the beginning, we had a 400 pound loss above the dump trailer. So I would say maybe, maybe, although I thought it wasn't, maybe it is closer to a one to one ratio wherever you're at on the fulcrum. 220 pounds of counterweight has provided an additional 400 pounds of lift. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome because that means if I were to add another 100 pounds of counterweight, then I might get another 600 pounds of lift capacity. Hmm, maybe that's a future video at some point. All right, so that time we did not tip forward, but this is an imperfect test. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you've got 1,400 pounds, naturally you're gonna have more of it forward because I had a whole nother row. In order to get the 1,400 pounds, I had another row out here. So that means some portion of that 1,400 pounds was actually further away from the pins. Guys, I hope you found this test helpful, both entertaining and informative. I know for me, it was a lot of fun and really interesting to see not only how capable these machines are, but just how much those counterweights really help. I mean, you're getting double the amount of lift capacity for what you're actually putting on the machine, at least in my case. So it would be really interesting to know how these things stack up against the big brand machines, not just in lift capacity, but in dollar per pound, meaning you pay five, 6,000 for that, and you got a functional lift of around 1,000 pounds to 1,100 pounds and a max lift of 1,400 pounds. Hmm, but you pay $40,000 for a big brand machine, and I don't know what their lift capacity is, but Hmm, maybe we should find out. That would be interesting, right? I think that would be really interesting to know. If you like this sort of thing, do me a favor and hit the like button and think about subscribing. We do a lot of fun videos and not just with the Chinese skid steer, we do all kinds of DIY projects and we got a lot more fun projects ahead and including a little teaser behind me if you can see those large pressure treated posts. So I'm not gonna say too much of that. Subscribe, come back for more. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I so appreciate you guys watching and tuning in to the next one. We'll see you then. God bless you.